Today we're speaking about one of the most important subjects ever on end of the age television. Another Jewish Holocaust ahead. The horrible Nazi Holocaust that killed six million Jews is still fresh in all of our minds. The Jews say, never again. But the prophecies of the Bible tell us that another Jewish Holocaust is coming. However, you and I can rescue Jews from this coming Holocaust. In today's lesson, I'll explain how. It all began as I was riding on an airplane toward Jerusalem. I was thinking about the prophecy of Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, verse 15 through 21. It's the most famous prophecy in the entire Bible. It's called the Olivet Discourse because Jesus gave it from the Mount of Olives. In this prophecy, Jesus said an event would occur called the abomination of desolation. He said when this event occurs, that the Jews living in Judea would have to run for their lives. It would be so urgent that Jesus said in that day, if you're on your housetop, don't even come down into your house to get your clothes. Hit the ground running. Because then will be great tribulation, such as never has been before, no, nor ever again shall be. As I was thinking about this prophecy, riding in the airplane toward the nation of Israel, I just said to the Lord in my mind, the Jewish people don't study this prophecy. This is a New Testament prophecy. They're going to get blindsided when this event occurs. Somebody needs to warn them. I was just saying that to God in my mind. And it's like he spoke back to me, and again, it was not audible. But he spoke back to me and said, well, you understand it, and you've got a magazine, and you've got a job. Well, I began to immediately tell God why I couldn't do this. Number one, I don't speak or write Hebrew, and I assumed that the magazine would need to be produced in Hebrew. Number two, how are we going to get it into Israel? The Jewish people don't want Christian literature in Israel. They probably would not allow us to ship it in. And I probably couldn't get anyone inside of Israel to print it. And then finally I said, besides, this is going to cost a lot of money, maybe $100,000. And I don't have the money. I don't know whether you've ever tried arguing with God or not, but it's like beating your head against a block wall. I knew down in my heart that I had a job, an assignment from God. Well, I went ahead to Israel. I conducted the prophecy tour. And after I got back into the United States, I wrote an article for our End Time magazine. I told people what God had laid on my heart and asked them if they would be willing to help me accomplish this goal. Well, people began to send money. We opened a special account just for mailing magazines to the area of Judea, Samaria, and warning the Jewish people. Over a amount of well, maybe a year or two, we received maybe $22,000, $23,000. Again, I didn't know how much it was going to cost. By then, though, I had this vivid impression that we were supposed to make the special mailing to the people of Judea, Samaria, with our September, October edition of End Time Magazine. Now, don't ask me to explain that, because I can't. But I felt this vivid impression that that was the edition of the magazine that needed to go to warn them about the coming Holocaust and about the prophecy of Jesus Christ. Well, in spring of 1998, it was May, I went again to Israel. We had about 50 people on our tour, and I said to our Jewish guide, Yehuda, I said, Yehuda, I've got to go to a printer while I'm here. I've got, got to get some bids on this magazine we're going to produce. He looked at me and said, when are we going to do that? You've got 50 people here We've, we're scheduled full all day, every day. We can't do it. We have no time. I looked at him and said, I have to. He said, why don't you allow me to handle this for you? I was a printer before I went into guiding. Now, he'd been my guide six years. I never knew this. He said, 
I'll get the quotes for you. I'll do the match prints. I can handle it for you. I said, okay. Well, I was pretty stunned because I realized right then that Almighty God had given me my own Jewish agent for this project, and I didn't even know it yet. Well, we got back to the United States uh, in May of 1998, and I began to produce the magazine. I wrote everything as carefully as I could because I wanted to do everything exactly right. Finally, the negatives were sent to the printer in Jerusalem. Oh, by the way, uh, when I got back to the United States after the 1998 tour, there was a quote from one of the biggest printers in Jerusalem from Yehuda. And also, he had been to the postmaster general of Jerusalem, and uh, he made all the arrangements so all these could be distributed. All of my objections just melted. And I was pretty amazed by that. So we send the negatives to Israel, and they sent back saying, we need $15,000 to do the printing. So we wired the money. After a week or so, Yehuda said, we haven't got the money. I said, I wired it. So we went to check on it. I thought when you wired money, it arrived almost instantaneously. But here we were a week, and there's $15,000 out there floating somewhere. We tried to track it. Finally, after a couple of weeks, the money showed up. Now, I understand now what was happening. I didn't then. But I realize now that when you wire money from the United States to the Middle East, the governments want to know who are you sending money to and why? Because they want to make sure you're not funding terrorism in the Middle East. Well, anyway, the money showed up and the process began. Now, by this time, we're way behind on our schedule. We're now into the first part of October. I'm getting frustrated. This isn't working right. And I was frustrated because I felt like I'd started too late. I was behind time. And it was like every move I made, I was struggling against uh, res forces of resistance. However, after doing my best, it dawned on me, hey, this is God's project, not yours. Maybe God is timing it, because I'd had that experience before. When everything wasn't going right and I was doing my best, sometimes God was really taking over the project. Well, that's what I came to believe. Finally, on October the 20th, I received an email from Yehuda saying, the magazines are done, and they will be in the mailboxes of all the people of Judea, Samaria, by the 21st and 22nd of October. And they will receive them on the morning of the 23rd of October. Well, I was excited. Here was a project we had been working on for two years. It's just about to come to fruition. I woke up the morning of the 23rd, and I was absolutely stunned. Because Benjamin Netanyahu, who was in his first round of being the Prime Minister of Israel, had been in the United States at the Y River compound attempting to negotiate a peace deal with the Palestinians. The headlines on October the 23rd, the day our magazines were landed in the mailboxes of all the people who lived in the West Bank, the headlines read, Netanyahu to give... 27% of West Bank to the Arabs. My magazine was warning them, your leaders are going to sell you out. Now, the, the settlers didn't believe that. The settlers believed that this was their promised land. They were never going to leave this land. But my magazine was warning them that it was not going to turn out that way and what they needed to do about it. And the very day our magazine was arriving, the headlines worldwide said, Netanyahu to give 27% of the West Bank to the Palestinians. I was stunned, I was amazed, and I also realized that God really was coordinating our project. Let me tell you a little bit about what was in this special edition. I actually have a copy of what we mailed. This copy was mailed back in October, like I said, of 1998. And it went to every home in the West Bank. At that time, there were about 150,000 Jews living in the West Bank. There's many more than that today. Nevertheless, this edition of the magazine was devoted to explaining the prophecy and telling the Jews what they should do about it. Here was the essence of it. I stated to them in this magazine that a Palestinian-Israeli peace treaty was going to be signed according to the prophecy of the Bible. It would create a Palestinian state in the area of Judea, Samaria, 
the area that's presently known as the West Bank or the occupied territories. It's the area that was captured by Israel during the 1967 war. I also told them in the magazine that the Jews in Judea, when this peace agreement was struck and when Judea became the Palestinian state, they would either be bought out and moved into Israel proper, or if they refused that, they would be allowed to remain in their homes living as a Jewish minority in the new Palestinian state. I mean, after all, there's 1.5 million Arabs living in Israel as a, an Arab minority in the Israeli state. So the logic was, why can't we have two or 300,000 Jews living as a Jewish minority in the newly created Palestinian state? So the Bible says that that's what's going to happen. Furthermore, as part of this agreement, according to the prophecies of the Bible, the Temple Mount was going to be placed under a sharing arrangement between Muslims and Jews. This sharing arrangement, the Jewish people would be able to worship on their area of the Temple Mount. The Muslims would worship in their area with the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And all this would be supervised by the international community. Furthermore, the prophecy states that during the first three and a half years of this agreement, Israel would be able to build her third temple on the Temple Mount without disturbing the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. It would be built north of the Dome of the Rock. And then once the temple is completed, animal sacrifices will be reinstituted. Now once the sacrifices are begun, there's going to be great objection to these sacrifices. There will be worldwide opposition, especially from the animal rights activists. Now, the leader of the world community, and there will be a recognized leader by this time, he's going to be under tremendous pressure to solve this problem. The Jews are determined we're supposed to offer these sacrifices. The Old Testament tells us this, and so we must do this while the animal rights activists are screaming at the top of their voice, uh, barbarism in the 21st century, animals have rights too. So finally the Antichrist, the world leader who will be the Antichrist, will stand there on the Temple Mount and say, I'm stopping these sacrifices. And there's good reason to stop them. There's rumors going around that I'm your Messiah. I haven't admitted it till now, but it's true. I am your Messiah. You don't need these sacrifices anymore. The Bible says he'll cause the sacrifice to cease and then he'll stand there saying, I'm the ultimate authority here. I am your Messiah. The Bible even says he'll stand there claiming to be God. Now that event is called the abomination of desolation. Well, when we put all this in our magazine, the next question, of course, was, what should those in Judea do? Like I said, at the time, there were about 150,000 Jews living there. Now, I told them, if none of this happens, of course, I'm a Christian minister writing to the people of Israel. I didn't try to be something I wasn't. I told them up front, I'm a Christian minister. The purpose of this magazine is not to proselytize you, but there's a prophecy about real danger to the people of Judea, Samaria, and I'm writing to warn you. Now, you may not have faith in what I'm telling you. However, if the things I've told you don't come to pass, then you can throw this magazine in the trash. But save it until you find out. If there is a peace agreement, and if the Temple Mount is placed under a sharing arrangement, and if the Jewish Temple is rebuilt on part of the Temple Mount, then that's your signal that what I'm telling you is in fact true, that the prophecy of Jesus is accurate. And Jesus said, when you see the abomination of desolation, the Antichrist standing on the Temple Mount claiming to be Messiah and God, then you've got to hit the ground running because then will be great tribulation such as never been before nor ever again shall be. If you're on your housetop, don't even come down into your house to grab your clothes. If you're in the field, don't go back to your house to get your billfold. Hit the ground running immediately because then will be great tribulation. It's going to be another Jewish holocaust. And then I told them in the magazine, when you get to Jerusalem, look for the signs that say, end time prophecy conference, I will meet you there. We planned this conference so when the Jews come there, we'll be able to say to them, now, the prophecy of Jesus just saved 
your life, your physical life. Now, let us tell you about eternal life through Jesus Christ. Now, these Jewish people that believe just enough to run for their life, they're going to look over their shoulder and they're going to see their brethren being slaughtered. They're going to realize that Jesus just saved their physical life. I think they will be ready then to hear about eternal life through Jesus Christ. Well, that's what the plan is, and that I told them all this in the magazine. After the magazines actually hit in 1998 in the Judea Samaria area, my phone began to ring from Israel. Politicians, rabbis, uh, people living in Judea Samaria, they were all calling. What does this mean? Why are you doing this? There were a few of them that were irate, but not many, maybe two or three. Leave us alone, stay out of our business. But there were many of them that said, thank you for caring about us. And they wanted to know more. So I could tell that there was a receptivity there from the Jewish people. Well, next spring in 1999, I'm back in Jerusalem for our annual prophecy tour. My phone rang in my room. A man said, uh, Mr. Baxter, I received your magazine. I live in the West Bank. Could I come up and talk to you? I said, sure. He came up to the room. He said to me, uh, you know, your magazine has caused a lot of discussion amongst us who live in the West Bank. I said, really? He said, yes. Our rabbis tell us that we've got to get out of Jerusalem and live in the West Bank, that that's where safety is. You're telling us we, get out of the, we must get out of the West Bank and get to Jerusalem. You're telling us the opposite of what our rabbis are telling us. I said, really? He said, yes. And most of us believe you're right. And they're wrong. And I realized that we're going to be able to be effective with this people, with this plan. We've got to help them to escape the terrible Holocaust II that is coming. Okay. Now, what's in time's plan? We're calling our plan the Israel Project. As we've already told you, we've already sent one magazine. But we're not nearly done. Because we've now been on television with our end of the age program for almost three years. End of the age is presently being aired there four times per week. We're hoping to be on daily soon. Warning the people of Israel, teaching the prophecies of the Bible so they will know what to do. We're also opening our Jerusalem Prophecy College in November. God has supernaturally provided a charter from the Israeli government giving us permission to open this college in downtown Jerusalem. Here you can see the logo of the Jerusalem Prophecy uh, College. We're so excited about what God is doing. Now the launch for the college is going to be November of 2013. And here you can see on your screen, you can see pictures of the college. This is actually the cloud building in downtown Jerusalem. Our college is going to be on the 12th floor. You can actually see the Mount of Olives and the Dome of the Rock from our location, from the windows of our college. This is where it's going to be located, and we're going to use this as our headquarters to spread the news of the prophecies of the Bible because more prophecy is going to be fulfilled right here in Jerusalem and in the nation of Israel than any place else in the world. But most of the Jewish people don't understand the prophecies of, at all. But we've been called to teach those prophecies and that's what we intend to do. We're also going to be having a prophecy conference on November the 2nd, 2013. It's already scheduled. And we're going to have it here in the auditorium you're viewing right now. It seats 600 people. It's in the same building that will be housing our Jerusalem Prophecy College. We're hoping to fill up this auditorium with Jewish people and launch the college from this conference on November the 2nd. 2013. Okay, we also plan to once again put a magazine in every home in Judea. We're going to do it shortly before the abomination of desolation. We're going to know when it is because once the temple's almost built, it won't be very long after they begin animal sacrifices that the sacrifices will be stopped. So we're planning on sending another magazine telling them everything to all the homes in Judea, Samaria. And there's not 150,000 Jews living there now. By that time, there will be 400,000. If funds allow, we'd like to send the magazine to every home in all of Israel. That way, the whole nation of Israel can become aware 
of the warning that we're given, and then they're going to watch it all unfold. Furthermore, we're going to use television and every media resource possible to warn the people of Israel. Okay, we need your help to rescue the Jews from the coming Holocaust. We need to pay off the Jerusalem Prophecy College in the next 30 days. We also need to remodel the building for the college. We can't even start on the remodel until the building's paid off. We need to remodel the college by January the 2nd. You can see that we're up against severe deadlines. We also are going to set up video conferencing between our offices here in Plano and Jerusalem. So I'm going to be able to stand right here in our studios in Plano and talk and have conversation with the students that will be attending the Prophecy College in Jerusalem. It's going to be an incredible opportunity. We also plan for end of the age television to become daily with high quality internet webcasting from my, right here to the entire world. All of this is part of what we call the Israel Project. Now, what can you do? We need as many people as possible to give $500 or more to the Israel Project and the Jerusalem Prophecy College. Now, I know that's considerable money, but to save the Jews from Holocaust II, it's nothing. I'm asking every one of you, if you possibly can, even if sacrifice is involved, please do this now. Now, our gift to you as an appreciation is a brand new DVD we produced. It's not for sale. It's called Seeds of Armageddon, November 29, 2012. An event happened on November the 29, 2012 that set the world on the path to Armageddon. This DVD will tell you all about that event and what you can expect between now and the Battle of Armageddon. We're on the road to Armageddon right now. Now, please start calling. Start calling right now. The number to call, 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. Or you can also donate at endtime.com slash JPC. That's endtime.com slash JPC, standing for Jerusalem Prophecy College. So you can go to either of those places. Now, here's what I'm saying to you. We can save the Jews from Judea, from the coming Holocaust. We've got to get the word to every one of them. Now, some of them are not going to believe us. And sadly, they're going to perish. But many of them will believe us. Jesus Christ gave the warning himself. We know from the Scripture that all of Israel will be saved at the time of Armageddon. By then, two-thirds of them will be destroyed. But the Bible clearly says, ultimately, all of Israel shall be saved. As God has now turned back to the Jewish nation, they were reborn May the 14th of 1948. Now they've grown to be a powerful nation, the fifth most powerful nation in the world. So we know all Israel is going to be saved when Jesus Christ comes at the Battle of Armageddon, they will rush out to meet him. They're going to bow before him to worship him. The Bible says they'll, walk, they'll behold the nail prints in his feet, the nail prints in his hands. Zechariah 13, 6 says they will say to him, Messiah, where did you get these wounds? He'll say, I received these in the house of my friends. And all of a sudden, 2,000 years of Jewish blindness is going to come peeling off the Jewish mind. And they're going to say, so you're Jesus. Oh, Messiah, can you ever forgive us? Well, does anybody know what happens when someone asks Jesus to forgive them? I do. He forgives them. Okay, now that's what's going to happen at Armageddon. But before that, there's another revival coming. I found it in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 7. Now remember, I told you that when the Jews from Judea, three and a half years before Armageddon, when they run for their lives, the ones that believe us, they're going to come to Jerusalem. There was a pretty good little revival started in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago on the day of Pentecost. Do you believe God can do it again? I absolutely believe He's going to do it again. And I have found a scripture in the Bible that says He will. Zechariah 12, 7 says, God will save the tents of Judah first, not all of Israel, but the people who flee from Judah and they come to Jerusalem because 
of the warning from the prophecy of Jesus, the Lord said, I will save the tents of Judah first. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying to you that we have this wonderful privilege. I don't know of any other ministry in the world that's warning the Jews of Judea. But we're going to have a college there that is going to be teaching on a daily basis. We're on television there. We're going to distribute magazines there. We want the Jews to know that they must save themselves from the coming Jewish Holocaust in Judea. So if you want to help us, call right now. The number to call is 1-800-IN-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. Or go to endtime.com slash JPC. And we're going to send to you, as a gift of appreciation, a DVD that's not available for sale. But it's brand new that I made so that you can understand actually what's going on here. It's called Seeds of Armageddon, November 29, 2012. The seeds for the battle of Armageddon were sown then. The clock is ticking. We're on the road to Armageddon right now. Now remember what the Lord said to Abraham. He said, Abraham, I'm calling you, and I'm going to bless those that bless you, and I will curse those that curse you. This is our chance to be a blessing to the people of Israel. So call right now at 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463, or you can go to endtime.com. The people of Judea are depending on you and me. The prophecy of Jesus in the most famous prophecy chapter of the Bible is for a time just ahead of us. It'll happen three and a half years after the Middle East peace agreement is signed. I'm talking about the Middle East peace agreement that our Secretary of State, John Kerry, is working so hard to bring about right now, and other leaders of our world have attempted to bring this about right now. That's what I'm talking about. They're going to get the deal done. There is going to be a Middle East peace agreement. We're just about out of time in order to accomplish this. So once again, I'm asking you, help us to rescue the Jews for every person that donates $500 or more. We're going to send you as a gift of appreciation, Seeds of Armageddon, November 29, 2012. So call us, 1-800-END-TIME, or go to endtime.com. I thank you. God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you. 